lot of reasons why someone would build a server for work, for their home lab, just because they want to, or because their YouTube channel hit 20,000 subscribers and they want to build one and give it away. So with those choices, which one do you think we're doing today? Come on. Yep, we hit 20,000 subs and I am super appreciative to all of you guys out there, whether you've been around since day one or if you're just watching this video in hopes of getting a free server, all you guys are awesome. So here are all the parts. We're gonna be building it today and What's this? This video is sponsored by Netgear and their WAX630E Wi-Fi 6 access point. Now, this ain't your dad's access point. Well, it could be, if you get it for him. Leave your data access point in the dust and upgrade your network to Wi-Fi 6E with the WAX630E giving you the most powerful SMB access point on the market with combined wireless speeds up to 7.8 gigabits per second, a dedicated six gigahertz band, WPA3 security, and one year of the Netgear Insight subscription included. Setting up your access point is made easy with the Netgear Insight app and you're sure to have enough bandwidth with the built-in 2.5 gigabit per second PoE++ port along with an additional gigabit port for daisy chaining another device. If you're looking to upgrade the Wi-Fi in your home or in your business, then be sure to read more about the Netgear WAX630E in the video description below. And thanks again to Netgear for sponsoring this video. All right, like I said, we will be building a home server today and giving it away. So the rules are simple. Hey guys, it's me, Editor Brett, and I'm here because I wanna fill you guys in on how the giveaway is going to work. Now, I originally wanted to do this by giving it away to somebody directly in the YouTube comments, but after going through the YouTube guidelines on giveaways, it seems like it's a gray area to do it this way. That coupled with all the YouTube scam bots that are going on and I figured the best way to do it is the good old fashioned boring way and do it through Gleam. So if you wanna enter the giveaway, there's a Gleam link down in the description of this video. So go click on that and it'll have all the different ways you can enter the giveaway and fingers crossed. So that's it, back to the video. So let's walk through the parts we're gonna be using. At the heart of the build, we will be running an Intel Xeon E5 2698V3. Pretty decent processor, 16 cores, 32 threads. I know it's dated, but still quite a capable chip. That is going to be going into this Jinyu X99 Titanium D4 motherboard. And I've had, honestly, really good experiences with these Jinyu boards. So we will be going with this. It is full ATX. Let's open it up and take a look. Uh, okay. Yep, looks like a motherboard. Very nice, very nice. Ooh, ah, we even have like a VRM cooler. And an underrated feature of this board that a lot of new boards have is the built-in IO backplate. So I don't have to cut open my fingers trying to shove a sharp piece of metal into another sharp piece of metal. For RAM, we are going with two sticks of 16 gigabytes DDR4 ECC 2133 mega transfers. More than enough, you can go ahead and add some if you need it. But again, now I know this isn't gonna be the most powerful server around, obviously, but I think it'll get the job done for most everybody out there, especially if this is your first venture into home labbing. Cool. Next, let's talk about storage. So for the boot drives, we are going to be going with two of these 128 gigabyte SSDs from Inland. And yeah, they're consumer drives, but I am going to put them in essentially RAID 1 or mirror them so that if one fails, you're still good to go. For storage, we are going with three of these six terabyte Seagate Exos uh, enterprise drives. So these are SAS and I do have uh, a way to connect those. Don't you worry. I know uh, most everything is SATA. Don't worry. I will be throwing in one of these LSI uh, 8i cards. What is the exact model? They have a SAS 92058i. So this is an HBA. It will allow you to connect eight drives directly to this and goes into one of the PCI slots. Six terabytes, three of these, that gives you 18 total terabytes of disk space. 
I will probably put it in a RAID Z1, so 12 terabytes of usable space with one drive of fault tolerance. So I'll give a shout out to two companies in particular because they both provided parts for this giveaway and I am super appreciative of that. They didn't have to do that, but when they heard that I had 20,000 subs and that I was doing a giveaway, they were eager to provide some parts. So the first one is Icy Doc. They provided two really cool pieces of hardware here. Uh, one being a single slot, five and a quarter bay, that transforms that into storage for six SSDs. I know you can just, you know, double-sided tape them and throw them in the case wherever you want, but in terms of having your server actually look nice and functional, and being able to hot swap these in and out is freaking sweet. Ice Doc, you guys are awesome. They also provided this chonker right here. So similar to uh, the SSD storage, this will convert three five and a quarter bays to, uh, I'm pulling it backwards, but that'll transform it into space for five three and a half inch hard drives. So we're going to have so much space to store Storage, storage, storing storage. And a huge shout out to InWin because they provided the case for this build, which is the PE689. And PE stands for physical education because you're going to be sweating when you see a degraded drive eventually in your uh, home lab. I'm so funny. It's probably like performance edition or something. They also provided the power supply for this. So we do have an 850 watt, 80 plus gold power supply. With that said, let's go ahead and get stuff installed. So here's the inside. And like I mentioned before, we have so much space for storage. You can see along the top, you have four slots of five and a quarter inch. So obviously one, two, three, four, we will be utilizing all of that with our icy dock hardware. You also have a spot for a two and a half inch drive, so an SSD. And then you have five uh, easy install hard drive spaces. So, bada bang, toolless, throw a hard drive in there, slide it back in, it's that easy. So yeah, this case is freaking sweet. You have seven expansion slots for PCIe, and that will give us pretty much all the space we need for our motherboard. And now you're probably thinking, oh, a real server, that's, why didn't you do it in like a, a 4U chassis? Because if I'm giving this away, I don't know if the person that I'm sending it to has a full server rack. I'm more inclined to believe that they have space for this though. So yeah, that's what we went with. It's free, shut up. Let's go ahead and throw the motherboard in here. Not literally, don't throw your motherboard. We're in. What the hell was that? I hope that wasn't something important. Oh, SSDs. These are durable. Uh, let's go ahead and throw these uh, five and a quarter, well, I don't even know what to call them, docks. And we are going to need access to all four bays. Out you go. I said, out you go. All right. You should be able to just slide that. Actually, let me show you guys the back of this. So the front, uh, you get like I said, room for six SSDs. And around the back, there are your SATA connections and SATA power. You only need two SATA power pins or plugs to power all of it. And you do have two built-in fans. So yeah, keep your SSDs nice and cool. Or like me. Oh my God, tell them to stop. Slide you in. And we gotta line it up with the front of the case. And now let's install this guy. So very similar to the SSD one. These are hot swappable for your hard drives. It comes out, throw your hard drive in there, slide it back in, lock it, and you can fit five of them, which is freaking sweet. This should slide in. Come on. What are you hitting? Oh, so we're gonna have to bend these down a little bit. All right, we're back. Uh, all in there, all good. Look how pretty this looks. Sheesh, God, I gotta stop doing that. Cool, I think that's everything pretty much for the case itself. Looks nice in there. 
still a lot of space. Obviously we have to put the power supply in at some point, but yeah, you'll see where I kind of did my surgery to get these out of the way. Um, let's just call it rustic. But yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and install the CPU and cooler. Come off. Boom. Like a glove. All right, fan. We're in. Uh, system fan, do we have, okay, we'll go. I guess we do the power supply now. So again, thanks to Inwin for sending this over. So 850 watts, fully modular, which is awesome. Okay, yeah. Um, so normally you'd probably connect all the power up, but what I'm gonna do is get the hard drives and SSDs installed. So let's go ahead and do that. One and two. So we have both of those plugged in. Let's go ahead and do the hard drives. So these are SAS drives, like I mentioned before. And the setup here from Icy Dock is all SATA. So we're just going to mount them directly into the case. And when you get this, whoever you may be, if you wanna add more storage in the future, you can use SAS as well, just like this, or you have this entire setup to add five more drives, any SATA drives you want. So lots of room for expansion. Throw the hard drive in here and just drop it in. Voila. Two and three. Neat. Yeah, I think we could go ahead and get everything cabled up. Cabled up? Connected? Probably a better word. So we'll zip tie these up and out of the way at some point. CPU, boom. Audio, you're probably not gonna use this ever. We'll plug it in just in case. Don't know what this is for. It connects this little metal piece back here. I assume some type of security thing. So we need the SATA power for both of our setups, but we will be using the HBA card for our hard drives, because they're SAS. Voila. And let's throw our GPU in there. Only need the GPU for installation, video out, so. So this is a mini SAS connection. So it goes from mini SAS to four SAS connections. That's how we get eight drives total out of that HBA because it has two mini SAS connections. And then boom, one, two, three, and one to grow on. Okay, we're good there. We do need to run the SATA power though. Let's see, how many does this have? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, three. I think that's everything we need to access from the back panel. We'll zip tie you guys up a bit. All right, should be much nicer. Now, SATA connections. You have to bust out the phone light. And just like that, we are Done. Yeah, yeah, it ain't the prettiest, but man, look at all the space you still have left and all the expansion. You have space for four more solid state drives in the front. You have five full bays for hard drives. You have another spot for a solid state drive and you have two more spots for more hard drives. So yeah, and then if you want, you can literally just like duct tape I don't know, a million SSDs at the bottom. So this will function very well as a high capacity NAS. So what I'm gonna do is plug it in and get TrueNAS scale installed and make sure everything is up and running and uh, keeping my fingers crossed. Okay, so powered it on, everything was good. We are now in here installing TrueNAS scale. So let's go ahead and do that and pray everything works properly. So here we are going to specify our two SATA SSDs. We'll do both of them. Uh, create a swap. Sure. We don't hear any of the hard drives spinning up. I'm hoping that they're detected. Please reboot and remove the installation media. Okay. Reboot. Um, yeah, I don't have any network plugged in. I forgot about that. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> okay, it is up and running. So we go to the 
IP address specified. Should be able to log in. Uh, I'm just setting it to password for now. You can change it later. And boom, we are in. 16 gigs of RAM. That is not correct. That should be 32, I think. Worry about that later. Okay, create pool. Let's see if it sees all of our SAS drives. I hope it does. So storage, create pool. There are no drives here. Yep, it only sees our two SATA disks. It does not see any of our SAS drives. So let's take a look. All right, so it's been a day or three and I figured out the issue, don't worry. So some enterprise drives, when you plug them in and they're not spinning up, a lot of the times it's the three volt issue. And what that is is essentially some drives when the third pin or the three volt pin on the SATA connector, the SATA power connector is connected, it basically shuts that down. So a lot of times you'll see this with shucked drives or enterprise drives and it's kind of annoying, but to solve this, you can do one of two things. You can get rid of the pins entirely, or you can do something less permanent and get these Molex to SATA adapters, and that's what I did. So put those in there, drive spun up, we are good to go. So if we go in here and look at storage and go to disks, we see all the disks, our two boot SSDs and our three six terabyte hard drives. So. If we go back into storage, go to create pool, we'll select all of our hard drives, move them over, and by default, it wants us to do RAID Z, which is what we wanted to do anyway. So we'll let it do that. Oh, we forgot to give it a name. We'll call this one Three Little Iggies. <laughs> all right, and click create. Well, must begin with a letter. Boom and it is created. So if we go back to our dashboard, you will see our CPU, all 16 cores, 32 threads, 32 gigabytes of ECC memory, and our three little pigs storage pool. We have 10.7 terabytes of usable space with one entire drive as redundancy. So that's essentially it. You are free to do whatever you want with this. Go install some VMs, Add some more storage, set up some Samba shares, throw it out your window, do whatever you want with it, doesn't matter. But this is it. I think it's an awesome little system. I hope whoever wins this puts it to good use. So like I said, if you want a chance to win this, make sure you are living in the United States. Please don't move to the US to try to win this. That would be weird. Yeah, again, thank you to everybody out there who has subscribed to my channel. If you've even just watched my video and drop a like on any of them, you're freaking awesome. So if you like this video, please drop a like below. If you wanna see more content, maybe another giveaway at 50,000, who knows? Be sure to subscribe. I wanna give a huge shout out, not only to everybody who has helped me along the way, but specifically to my Patreons and YouTube members you guys have gone above and beyond and continue to support me even when I don't make any videos for a couple of months. That's freaking awesome. So you guys are the bomb diggity, but that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.